Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. I uh, promised uh, this little uh, teardown and you saw it in the mailbag. It was sent to me uh, but from someone from uh, Sarajevo and uh, a veteran, I believe it was, uh, from Sarajevo. That's his email address. Anyway, so thank you very much. It's a Siemens camera uh, for an S55 Siemens mobile phone. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, you really do not see these things these days anymore. I mean, what uh, Vinti, you know, it's not that old in the scheme of things, but the pace of mobile phone technology has meant that uh, something like this was uh, obsolete before it even started. So let's crack it open, see what's inside. Now there's only one visible screw on this thing, which is on the end here. So let's see if we can take that out and maybe get inside this sucker. I might have to get my spudger out and uh, no, there we go. That's all it took. Oh, there was a second. Looks like somebody else. Looks like somebody's already taken it apart. So let's crack this sucker open. Maybe get the spudger in there. It helps. There's obviously a clip. I don't need this sucker working anymore. I've never owned a Siemens mobile phone, actually. Maybe they're big in Sarajevo. I don't know. Ta-da! Here we go. There it is. And the first thing you notice, of course, is this uh, massive cap here. And uh, what is that I hear you ask? Well, it's obviously um, the charging cap for the flash because these uh, flashes, these bulb flashes require a very high um, amount of energy and, uh, in, you know, in a very short amount of time, very high discharge uh, current. So you get that from storing all the energy, build charging it up in a uh, cap like this and then discharging it, wham, straight into the uh, flash and then that's why these things have a uh, cycle time they take a you know they might take anywhere from you know a second up to 10 seconds to actually uh, recharge and the main board is uh, pretty simplistic that looks like a linear technology logo there i don't actually know what the part is we've got sot 23 device pa passives and uh, not much else in here at all so we'll have to uh, flip this over here's the lens uh, obviously for the uh, CCD sensor and we've got the uh, viewfinder down here, which is just a crappy bit of uh, that probably not even glass probably just plastic and uh, The and the uh, flash in there with the reflector. So it took off a couple of screws and it looks like the whole Kit and caboodle drops out. Hey, we've got some interesting stuff on the bottom here. Clearly. There's a, a Second board down the bottom. What's our cap in there? It's a 33 Yep. 330, 330 volt, 60 microfarads, photo flash. It's specifically designed for photo flash applications. I'm just curious to see if there's any uh, charge on that at all here. Let's have a look. No, nah, there's nothing. But uh, if you were mucking around with these things and you had already uh, charged up that cap, that could be uh, quite dangerous. So one way to do that is if you've got a meter like this and with a low Z, um, setting, you know, that's only got a couple of K input impedance. You can actually use that to discharge a cap like that. Well, I think there's quite a bit of electronic -y goodness in this thing, and it is uh, quite an interesting um, sandwiched application. You can see the main uh, Siemens phone connector here, and it's got ribbon cable going down to the bottom here as well as up to the top. So that's split between the two boards, and there seems to be several other things split between the two boards so try to wedge these together and we've got some ribbon cable going from board to board here and uh, it's quite a little interesting uh, engineering design exercise in trying to fit all this into um, you know a, a package like this of course modern uh, mobile phones are you know extremely simplistic compared to this but back then this was um, pretty much the only way to do it. And this might have been an innovative uh, camera attachment for its time. Uh, pr probably the first uh, camera uh, mobile phone. So this was the first time that they were able to, uh, you know, actually do this thing. So they had to shrink a regular uh, camera application down into, you know, a um, uh, with the photo flash and everything. When you've got a big photo flash, they use LEDs uh, these days, but um, on modern mobile phones but back then you know just a big the big cap in itself and the photo flash and they decided to put in a tacky little viewfinder because that's what people were used to 
but they yeah the engineers have done a really good job to sandwich this together it's it's rather interesting and the main process is an NEC uh, probably a custom uh, chip D64100 F1 I have uh, no idea if you have any info on that let me know some sort of image processor or something like that ICS 501M uh, yeah probably like a serial uh, E squared prom perhaps not sure I've got a crystal down there and a couple of resistor packs around the place a couple of five pin SOT 23s and uh, not much else and uh, clearly some uh, firmware in the device and it's got the uh, firmware number written on it now I took out three uh, screws on the top here holding this top board in place so hopefully it will something will come apart yeah I don't expect that to come apart <laughs> come apart easily because it's wedged together there's our sensor ah we've got our sensor on the bottom directly on the bottom of the board and uh, I don't know I still can't seem to looks like we're stuck with the Siemens connector on the end here I might have to uh, might have to trim that off maybe yeah so what I've done is just snip those two bottom bits down there and ta-da there's the CCD sensor and uh, there's another device on the bottom probably a memory when it's got some copper shielding uh, tape over it that's rather interesting but uh, look at you know the amount of work that they've put into all this custom plastic and into you know they've all integrated it here with the cap that's a hey you know that's a fairly extensive system engineering you know um enterprise there and how they've strapped looks like they've sort of maybe sort of you know and they've catered for the flash device there and they've integrated the viewfinder into all that plastic and the lens and everything in there to line up with the hole in the board on the bottom and to sandwich that all together it's ah it's a rather clever piece of uh three-dimensional system of hey, just broken inductor off there oops <laughs> rather interesting bit of three-dimensional systems design there I like it it's brilliant and uh, this can be a really um, one of the more difficult aspects of uh, engineering actually just packaging the multi disciplines that you have to have to package something like this all together and uh, you know and get it out in a reasonable uh, time frame you've got to have the mechanical um, experts the uh, plastic you know packaging experts you've got to have marketing involved of course and you know and then the uh, the PCB layout guys and the designers and the you know the circuit designers and everyone involved in this thing you'd have you know the optics uh, people involved in all that sort of stuff so there's you know I wonder what sort of uh, what size team um, put this thing together but you know it, it seems you know it's a fairly simplistic application in the end but to put all that together is quite a bit of design work my hats off to them but it just goes to show that even the simplest everyday consumer uh, items like a little camera attachment for you know probably the first camera attachment for a mobile phone just what you know there's a quite a big uh, design team that's put you know uh, you know a year of their life nine months or a year of their life into designing this thing let alone something you know hideously more complex like the old uh, style uh, you know camcorders or something like that which are a massive you know amount of uh, product engineering which goes into those this is just you know what's involved in a simple camera hmm makes you think doesn't it I don't know who or what scan hex is with a K uh, maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the subcontract design company who did it I don't know but it's the MB 35 s and it's a uh, rev 1.0 and what do you know i just looked up the uh, camera pedia on google and scanhex is a um a company which uh, makes yeah digital imaging uh, devices and cameras are a taiwanese uh, company founded in 1997 they work in the uh, the silicon valley area of uh, taiwan and um they uh, produced at one point in uh, 2000 in early 2000s uh, 150 thousand cameras a month go figure and it looks like we have a date code here the 16th week 
um, 2003. And this is probably the best zoom I'm going to be able to do on my video camera here, but that is the CCD sensor chip. The die there, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's directly exposed. There's a, like a glass uh, top on there that's, you know, there's, well, I assume it's glass, yep. There's a glass top on there, so it's not like I can uh, penetrate that. So, you know, that helps keep out uh, uh, dust and uh, keeps it fairly robust uh, during manufacture. So why they've got that copper tape over the uh, one of the memory devices there, I, I don't exactly uh, know. It's shielding for something. Maybe it's the uh, photo flash discharge or something like that, perhaps. I'm not uh, entirely sure. So there you go, that's a teardown of the uh, one of the world's first uh, mobile phone camera attachments for the Siemens S55. And of course, uh, there's no like focusing mechanism or anything for this lens. It's just a, a fixed uh, focus lens. You can see it's just glued in there around there so that, you know, there's nothing fancy there at all. There's no zoom, just... Uh, uh, just a fixed focus, um, you know, I don't know if it's even a glass uh, lens, you know, it put, could be like a simple polycarb lens or something like that. I hope this comes out. I'm attempting to film handheld with my compact camera through the eyepiece of my Times 80 Olympus SZ microscope here and hopefully that's in focus and you can at least see the CCD, there's the uh, CCD substrate itself and the, uh, all of the uh, sensors, all of the pixel elements in there, and then the surrounding circuitry around the CCD sensor. So hopefully that's in focus. You can see the bond wires going off there as well. The bond wires go off to the uh, PCB substrate, which goes out to the, or oh, I guess what you call the PCB substrate, going off to the uh, pins of the package. But there's some uh, control circuitry inside there. It's rather neat. That's the uh, highest magnification I've got here. And you'll notice that with my, uh, I've got my Times 2 Barlow lens under there and my Times 10 eyepieces and my Times uh, 4 zoom on here. So that gives a total uh, zoom of uh, 80 times. And you'll see the very small working distance I've actually uh, got here. It's really, uh, it's really tiny. The lens is um, up there a bit uh, further from there, but you know, we're only talking about 25 millimeters working distance or something like that under this uh, microscope with that times two Barlow lens. So thank you very much, uh, Vedram from uh, Sarajevo for sending that in. That was rather interesting. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot more to it, but there's, uh, you know, I can't really uh, tear down that uh, sucker any further really, but so it's only a really quick, simple teardown, but lots of nice, interesting system engineering going into that. And it's almost a shame for something that, uh, you know, really didn't have a long uh, lifespan, I don't think. These sort of things would have only lasted a year or two and then disappeared completely from the market until they were uh, re re replaced with the, um, you know, like the uh, CMOS uh, camera uh, sensors and the LED flashes and things like that inside your regular mobile phones as you know them today.